Okay, so what we're coming to now is essentially the prelims for the people, the team, who were responsible. Not all, because H isn't on here, which is a bit... Which is a bit not good, but I'd imagine this might have been done at times and stuff. And we know Hitch Pride works, he did. He did, this, he, did, he did the Space Marine stuff. So these are similar to the grease proof paper so it's going to be quite hard to show so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out one at a time very gently and I'm just going to dry my hands so I don't want any grease on them whatsoever and I'm going to hold them up against the white background so you can pick out the detail and I'm going to try and work out who they are and how many we've got so there are three in this one. Oh gosh they're so delicate okay So, ugh, I've been provided a list by none other than Graham Davis as the definitive list of the people, and I think it's slightly wrong. So, I was told that who I've identified on here as either Mike Brunton or sort of Phil Gallagher. It's Phil Gallagher. There we go. Right, so the first one is is Phil Gallagher. I don't know if I picked that up there. I'll do my damn list. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Here we go. So that's Phil Gallagher. And this is this gentleman here. Uh, okay. I'll put that in safe there so it's not getting damaged. The next one is Jim Bamborough. That's lovely. So that's Jim Brambra and Jim is here. Cool. The next one. Is okay, he's a little bit missed out. It's 14. Oh, yeah, cool. I'm glad I've got this one. So, this one is Chaz Elliott, and I've not really chatted with Chaz, but he posts really funny uh, sort of Facebook stuff. So, that's Chaz Elliot, the Chaz Elliot, I should say. <laughs> oh my god, I'm saying no reverence whatsoever. And it's very hard to make Chaz out, but he's the one with the bike helmet here. Let's see if we get a good picture of him. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put these back and these keep, keep these safe. So we've got the th we've got three there. So we just cross those out. So I've got a feeling, unfortunately, we don't have all we don't have all the images. Oh, it's Graham Davis. <laughs> all right, let's get this right here, Graham. 
So he's got shaven hair. Shaving hair above ears. A metal mouth face, half half painted face. There we go, it's Greg, oh, Greg Davis, man. It's Greg Davis. Unbelievable. And that's Greg in there. Oh, amazing, amazing. Right, next one up is, I believe, is, yeah, none other than Jez Goodwin. And he's got a little space crow on his shoulder. It says, Jez. Widow's peak and eyebrows meet a metal nose and a very hair, a very high hairstyle. And there we go. Wow, quite incredible, really. This thing, it's amazing how this stuff survives. <laughs> it's like, what? Yes, he's there. There's Jess. Amazing. Right. Okay, now the next one. Oh, no, no, no. So, yeah. So, I thought someone else. So, the next one is. Oh, gosh, it's Phil Lewis. Wow. The next one is Phil Lewis. It says some missing with a gothic high tech camera spelt with a K camera eye patch and one tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Caricatures can be brutal. There we go. So that's Phil Lewis. And again. Like a snake Pliskin type here. Amazing. Right. Let's get those back in and we know those are safe. Right, next group of images. I hope we're all here. The ace if you were. Oh wow, wow, wow. Oh we've got Tony Apple and everyone and everyone calm down. We're it's all good. Tony's in the house. <laughs> so we've got Oh, oh that's just ace. Got the Renaissance master himself, Tony Ackland. Look at that, that is just lovely. Here we go, and Tony. Again, it's a bit of a shame. Squish the page a bit, there's Tony there. So glad we've got that piece. Oh, next one's really familiar. I'm gonna call these off as I go, and that'll save you a lot of time and pain, Tony. Next one up is okay. So this is Mike Brunton, and it's a little bit different than the actual image. So there's some stuff here. He's got an aerial. Mike's shaved head, scars, and Nazi. Eurosurgeon scar. All ah, right, okay. So he's been operated on by the Nazis. Black coat and or jacket. Reflection of a mushroom cloud in the shades. I oh, think there actually is. Oh gosh, I never noticed that detail before. Amazing. Wow. Wow. That one I've, I've not noticed before, but this is one is Mike. Is Mike Brunton. 
I'm so much detail there. I only picked up all the detail because it's in the annotations, but she's glasses, there's little mushroom clouds going off there. That's quite amazing. Wow. And so that's Mike Brunton. That's not Mike Brunton off. So the next gentleman, I believe, is oh, oh bloody hell, Kev Adams. Snotty Kevin, shaved head, studs in head, snotty nose, hook hand, guns in holster. And he, he doesn't look to be having a... <laughs> Kev doesn't like to be having a really good time there with the amount of mucus coming out of his mouth and nose. Poor chap. There we go. And and it has in the, in the it's a lot more subtle, but there we go. That's lovely, right? So let's get Kev Adams is knocked off, right? So we're doing we're doing really good. We're doing really good. Definitely got Sid, so we've got Sid. <laughs> Sid's just awesome. Right, here we go. It's got a few in here. So we've got one, two, three. I think that's Rick Priest. We've got the Perry Twins. <gasps> right, okay, okay. Things looking up. So we've got Alan and Michael Perry. So kind of takes the Perry Twins on one body. Like Zephod Beedlebrock. Oh. And you've got I am and so am I. <laughs> and you've got a little space. You've got a little space, hobbers on the head, that was a bit of the rage there, but that could have been a lot later actually. Okay. And oh, they've kind of been changed, like plants growing out of the head. No. There we go. Oh, those two guys there. I say two guys, two geniuses. And, I, and yeah, to be fair, to, to be known as the Perry Twins is, is a thing, but is it frustrating? Because they're both individually talented, talented people. Um, I think it's the, the, um, the drawback of being a twin. You, you're twins, you're not an individual. Or are you an individual? Weird, so I won't go into that. So the next one is the beloved Sid. And Sid, he's got, he's got sort of Sid the psych, he's got metal teeth, he's got broken glasses and he's wielding a chainsaw and he's got a, an amazing hairstyle. That's that one there. Let me just knock Sid off. Sid to boom, got Sid. Alan Mac Perry. They're done. That's good. And we've got Paul Cockburn. <laughs> and the comments for Paul are he's got totally white hair. Paul at front, some missing teeth. Keep aqua position and a dead rat. <laughs> and all the, all these are done by John Blanche. So they are just fabulous, really.
Um, so let's get rid of Paul Cockburn off the list. So we've got him, that's great news. Right, I'll put these back. And so, I'm not sure I've shown these. Do a quick go. There's Sid with the Chainsaw. There's um, Paul Cockburn. Looking very much like the guy out of. Um, oh, I can do the music. Elf. Uh, the guy in the white suit. Shok Shan Shajin or something? I don't remember if it'll come to me. Right, we're almost done. Well, he says, it's like four months ago. Ooh, different quality papers here. It's always good to see something different. Uh, so, okay, so there's only two in here. And the big boss, right at the front. Valves lit up. Glare. Bitterman. So, the Bitterman reference isn't to him being a, an unpleasant boss. It's a reference to the beer. He's a bit of a beer drinker. Uh, well, a bit of drinker. And the guy is... Guy's a genius. He really, really is. So not only did he have his idea in a Prox Games workshop to start a, a miniatures company, he then bought the company out, which is, is a feat in it itself. So if you think about it, a provisional company buys out a um, London company. A lot, a lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people. And those people got really nasty with him and did what I think were pretty crappy things because he wanted to retain some control. Don't get me wrong, I can understand the passion, but uh, kind of life people don't see and people can't kind of defend a position that they don't actually own. <laughs> I see it all the time. Um, like human psychology things, people think it's theirs and it might not necessarily be and directions change over time and it's the person in the driving seat who sets that direction so this is Richard Ellard and Richard Ellard's got really nice got, he's got a medal he's got an over, oversized medal he's got a Mickey Mouse badge on his furry hat a furry Davy Crockett hat at the front and he's got epaulets to to prove his sort of seniority and uh, <laughs> obvious control on the project looks great i love his goggles really good this is this guy here this guy so what i'm gonna do is i'm so over time, I'm going to break it all down and get um, and get some information on them. Probably do a quick sort of video of the personalities who who they were involved. But it's just time, and I've got like so much to do at the moment. And I'm not complaining, but it's all planned out. Right. So we've got we've got we've got Richard Ellard. Um, I'm going to be missing some, we can't have them all, we're not that lucky. And we've got Brian Ansell. I'm glad we've got Brian Ansell. And he's number 20, yeah, that's interesting. Right. I bet we won't, I bet, I bet we won't have John. And whoever. Hope we've got Trish. Got three more here, which is really nice. Over there. Oh, we've got Bob Naismith. <laughs> and we've got uh, 
Jervis Johnson as well, which is really good. And we've got Richard Halliwell as well, which is even better. Wow. So, I, I didn't even have to, I just recognise I'm Australian. <laughs> Richard Halliwell. The legend, that is Bob Naismith. Okay, so first one up is Jervis. Jarvis, sorry, I'm, I'm so phonetically deaf. <laughs> so that sounds lovely. Right. Bob. So delicate, these. And Richard Halliwell. So how Richard Halliwell's got. Plasters on his forehead, a flat top, haircut, half an eyebrow, a cigar, lots of pens, and I'm free, written on his shoulder pad. Bob had cropped hair, pirate's beard at the front. And Jarvis had with electronic front pack, and he's at the front of the image. And there they are. There's Jarvis here. There's Bob. And Richard Halliwell is, I think, number 19. Yes. There. Okay. So the next one is John Blanche and it's significantly different to what's in, in the book, which is love stuff like this. Right, so let's show. Let's show Alan Merritt. Alan, cool squad leader with cap and voice enhancer at front, study power glove, fist. Yep. And this is Alan here, there. The next one is Rick Priestley. That says Rick. Blue tattoo on inner tongue. The next one is just hugely different. This is John. So that's significantly different to the image that's portrayed in 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 the book. In the book, he's got a knife, black leather uh, coat, and a and a, uh, a, a cap. He's, in this one, he's got kamikaze headband, circuits on his head, half hair shorn metal implant at, at front of group, lots of something or other. Oh no 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 no! It's it's fairly it's fairly the same. I was looking at a really crappy image. I thought it was a peak cap. No, it's fairly the same. Wow. Sorry, I was I thought it was like a uh, one of the trucker hat things. Okay. Wow. So we're doing really well then, we've got Blanche. We've got Blanche, Priestley, and Merritt. Right, so that's good. So we're getting there. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're still a fair way to go, I know. Let's hope we've got a good set. So nice to have a full set. Uh, 
Okay. So oh, it's looking like we might have oh, finished. Oh, so they're on. Oh yeah. All oh, right. Okay. We might have. We might have some. We might have some. So here, this is a bit of a tricky one. So we've got Dave Andrews and um, Ali, Ali Morrison and Trish Morrison. So Ali's got. Uh, Trish has got some comments. Punk makeup. Joined at neck with chain. Um, Dave Andrews has got shaved in middle, black shades, bayonet and gun, forked beard. Awesome. Mmm, okay. Amazing. So those, that's that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So that's that three creeping there. So I'm just going to knock those off. So that's really good. That takes out a chunk of the players. That means you might have all of them. Boom. The next one. Ah! Oh, is Colin Dixon. Weird. Big hat, a, a rudder on top, cut off gloves, curly tash, very long fingernails. So Colin Dixon, wow. So yeah, as a side note for Colin Dixon, he is an incredible, credible painter. Figure painter, and that's how I, th I think that's how he started off as a, as a painter because that's where I, I, I kind of sort of heard his name and stuff like that originally. And anyway, to sculpting, and to be fair, he's, he's a good sculptor, he's a really good sculptor. But one of the first ranges he did, and it was it wasn't nice really for him, I'd imagine. So he he had to he basically he basically sort of re sculpt Skaven. I'm a big Skaven fan, and you get to have a good win. And I've got to be honest, that f fell flat for me. Um, that's no... Um, um, disregard to Colin Dixon at what all, but I just didn't... He just... He, 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 he couldn't pull it off. Um, especially the slaves and uh, the Storm Skaven stuff. The, the monks, I thought, were really good. They were really, really close. But yeah, um, no, I, I didn't like him, I've got to be honest, I just didn't like him. And I kind of, didn't put me off Skaven, but it's went, oh. <laughs> But he, he, don't <laughs> worry, he's great, he's done, he's done some incredible, incredible sculpts. And he is an all-round ace guy. Um... So, right, so we're doing really well. We might have them all. If there's four in here, we've got them all. I don't think there is. Oh, we're going to be missing one. Unbelievable. Oh, we're missing one. Let's know we are. So, here we got. So, we've got Lindsay Priestley. And. Lindsay has goggles, Arctic tank commander hat. That's there. And Lindsay's there. Let's cross off Lindsay. Next, we've got Bill Sedgwick. And he's got a gook badge. <laughs> different times, different times. And a, and a hat and a tatty, uh, with sort of tatty cloth bit. Uh, 
earth there. And you see Bill's his goop badge there. Cool. Ah, oh, no, it's not Geek. I'm sorry if I was... <laughs> oh, wow, that's me. I thought he was um, referring to Vietnam Chuck Norris type of gooks in the um, in the jungle stuff. He was actually talking to Gobbledygook. Of course he was. And the final piece is... Oh, four. Nick Beebe. Oh, cool. Uh, exaggerated shoulder pads. He's a he's a weight trainer. Picture of a woman. <laughs> oh, unbelievable! Right. <laughs> so, Nick Beebe. Oh wow. So Nick Beebe's got um, shoulder pads on with. Pictures of women. Pictures of women like kills, like he's a um, serial killer. And there's a little thing there, or should I say, ladies? You're going to read it anyway, so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, pouch with homemade pics, etc. Ponytail from from back over shoulder. And he's got a load of naked women. He's got, okay, so I've looked at. Really? Okay, <laughs> so it's, it's, on the original piece, he's got well, the best I can describe as page three ladies. Um, page three for any of the young ones who don't know, like sort of topless kind of sort of glamour women, and they were prevalent in the 70s, 80s, and uh, 90s. Um, yeah, so it <laughs> looks like Nick was a bit of a player in his youth, and why not? Why not? Good. Believe you me, getting a player in your old days like me, it's just hard work. Right, so that's it. So we're missing someone. No, we're not. We've got more. We've got a full set. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Oh, superb, superb. Right, so I'm gonna put these back in here so they don't get lost. So that was a long, a long unboxing, and thank you for bearing with me. Uh, but at least we know now. We've had a bit of a laugh at, at, at some of the stuff. I particularly like the Joe Collins connotation. What was it? Mmm, <laughs> Joe Collins. Mmm. Okay. So the next stage now is to check out a couple of the gun pieces which is kind of interesting and so what i've done is i've approached games workshop to see if they wanted to buy the items so they can have them in their archive or put them on display unfortunately covid got in the way and time is pressing now so I've kind of abandoned that, but what I've done is, is I've taken high high scans of the images and sent them to their archivist so they've got them. I also reached out to another gentleman, I don't want to name his name, but he's a high wealth individual who was who is starting a, muse a museum and that museum is going to be dedicated towards fantasy art and predominantly Dungeons and Dragons art and he was going to have small areas for you know sort of segue areas for the other other gaming genres in there again Kobe's got in the way so it kind of sort of time's pressing so the owner looks like she's going to bring him to the marketplace either in auction form or a fixed price I think that's that's fair it's it's hard to put a value on these pieces because they're not original pieces but the, we have to remember that the majority of these original pieces pieces have been lost over time i can't clarify which ones have been lost um 
yeah, the the items, the the Blanche items themselves could actually classes of in, in, individual artworks. I don't know, so I don't know where I don't know how the owner wants to deal, you know, to deal with them. I might talk to her, and I don't know. Ideally, I wanted to send personally. I wanted to send them back to the original artist, but it's going to be a bit difficult with one of them with the Andrews and the Morrisons and stuff but we'll we'll sort of see we'll sort of see I might do that off my own back purchase them off a lady and see, we'll go from there um, yeah so wow 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 <laughs> wow what we're we looking at here so just remind what we're looking at look at that you know wow it's it's history you know these were the prelims to this game which went on to become a billion pound company you know i just want to touch on the ansel stuff so when ansel took over the company there's a big fallout ansel was essentially saying i don't want to sell just resell other people's games i want to make my own game i want to make my own figures people were complaining about that don't get it don't get it but then again i've got benefit of hindsight i suppose well We've exhausted it. Thank you very much. I'm now going to take some high detail pictures of these, get them all up in the next few days. I'll get them on the website and we'll and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you. Bye bye.